guys, uh, you're about to watch another spot video, but before you did, I needed to make a couple of announcements to make some things clear. Um, the reason you see us all hanging out with each other unabashedly is specifically because we'd shot this before the uh, shelter in place order went down, actually, uh, I think a couple of weeks before, which is why we're so cavalier about personal space. But second, and most importantly, I wanted to talk about safety issues regarding the handling of spot. The fact is, he is a magnificent, remarkable piece of engineering, and he's also an industrial robot. And the care that should be taken around him is the care you would take around any industrial robot, uh, which means that it could hurt you if you do things wrong. For instance, uh, Spot runs on 12 motors, three in each uh, shoulder, uh, two that control the X, Y of the shoulder and one that controls the elbow. And those motors are all super powerful. If you got your finger between the motor and a place it wanted to go, your finger's gonna lose in that equation. And all around the perimeter of his body is nothing but pinch points. In fact, he has these handy straps up here on the shoulders, which are the safe places to be able to grab Spot. However, best practice is to always turn off Spot's motors before you get anywhere near him. All this is by way of saying that you will see me exhibit some less than ideal practices with Spot in this video, and that is because of the level of comfort I've achieved after three or four months of working with him. I just wanted you to know that up front. All right, enjoy the video. Hey, Adam here from Tested with another Spot video. Now we've been giving him skills and tasks so far, and we have great plans for a whole host of new skills and tasks in the future. But we thought this video was a good time to rewind a little bit and go back and talk about some of the basic rudiments of how Spot operates. You guys have been submitting some great questions about uh, how we steer him, how we guide him, exactly what his abilities are, and how autonomous he can be. So get ready. It's time for a little bit of Spot 101. My main interface with Spot is via this Android-based tablet computer. Uh, the handle is my own design for ease of utilizing it. And the first thing that happens when you power him up is he creates his own wireless network and I connect to it using this handset. That's not the only way he can operate, it's just the way he's delivered out of the box. So Spot right now is upside down, which means that's why the camera shot of me is upside down, but I'm gonna put him into self-right mode. It's a set of protocols that he uses to stand up. There he is. Well, good morning. How are you? <laughs> Damn, he's cute, isn't he? So Spot right now is up and running and he is set to all of his medium settings, medium gait, medium height, medium speed. Uh, and these are all fabulous for controlling him in a moderated and balanced fashion. Um, you can change his step height from normal to very tiptoey or super high. All of those actually make him slightly less coordinated. But again, this is all just out of the box. He is basically uh, a, a, a root platform at this point. And I can control how he walks. I can control in a couple of different ways. I can control him with joysticks. And with the joysticks, I have two different controls. The left control can go forward and back, left and right. And the right hand control is simply spin clockwise and counterclockwise. So that is one of the main ways. However, I wanna be clear that even though I'm directly controlling him from these joysticks, he's still making a bunch of decisions on his own. For instance, if I attempted to run him into that table, he would not run into the table. Watch him avoid it. I am mashing the joystick forward and he is not bound, banging into any obstacles despite my attempts to get him to. So here I'm steering him right into the table and he is moving his way around. Look at that! 
Did you see that? He lifted his foot around the drain pipe. Again, realize that even though I'm controlling him, what's going on inside of him is way more complex than just an RC car following the direction you're pointing. He's making all sorts of assessments about his surroundings. So as I move him over the pallet, if I move slowly, he goes one foot at a time, and he is seeing the pallet. Understand that not only does he see the pallet in his camera, he also recognizes that it's a 3D object. He actually can see where his feet are gonna land on it, and he can adjust his gait based on what his anticipation of where those footfalls are gonna land. Now watch me try and steer him into the wall, and he's not gonna hit it. He's just gonna stop. He's gonna keep on trying to find a way through the wall until he sees one. And since he's not gonna see one, I'll just steer him back out again. Now we can do the same thing with stairs. I steer him into stairs and he only has the mode of knowing that he's facing stairs. And then he makes all the decisions about how to get up them. All right, now I can change several parameters. Like I said, he comes out of the box running on medium everything. Here's his step height being normal. Here's his step height being high. And here's his step, like, step height being low. I like this one because it looks like he's tiptoeing. Also, there's actually a really interesting thing about his gait, because all humans, as you know, or you might not know, but we walk by falling, right? There's this pendulum effect, and there's a little bit of a fall, and his gait actually includes that unless you move him very slowly, and then he moves so that he's always over his center of gravity. Um, so if I push very slowly, you'll see that instead of two legs at a time, he'll start to move one leg at a time. Here we go, that's it. And this, in this way, because he's moving so slowly, he doesn't get any advantage from the pendulum effect of his swinging his legs back and forth, and thus he moves more carefully to keep his balance. There we go. Oh, also I'm running on medium speed, so let's see if I increase his speed. This is his fastest speed. Everyone was wondering, here it is. It's not that fast, but it's about a normal human walk. Yeah. Whoa, sorry about that, buddy. Oh, but these aren't all the tricks up his sleeves. His sleeves, he doesn't even have sleeves. He can do a little bit of dressage. Yep. And while he's doing this, he can do everything you could normally do with them. A little bit of a dance. This is the GIF, there it is, here's the boomerang. Ooh yeah, one foot, there we go. Okay, stop. <laughs> Good boy. These are some of the basic rudimentary skills Spot has been shipped with, but again, don't think of him as a robot, think of him as the very base level of a robotic platform. So up till now, I've been steering him using the joysticks, forward, reverse, left, right, but I actually don't even have to use that. I could use the video interface of what spot sees in order to direct him. So I'm looking at his front cameras right now, I'm gonna to point to a spot on the ground, now he's gonna make his way there. 
And as long as I keep pressing spots on the ground, Spot figures out a way he wants to go get where I'm telling him to go. And again, if I tried to steer him into something, he is actually going to uh, avoid it. Here, let's try and steer him over here into the wall. And there he is stopping. Now, if I want to get him out of this jam, the thing is, is I can actually look at multiple cameras from him. I can look at his left side, his right side, or his backside. And for his backside, that's what I'm going to do, because I can't see him right now. If you look up, I can't see him from here. But let me push a spot here and have him back in. There he is. Why, hey, buddy. So let's steer him around back towards us. And here you can see us. And Spot is walking right back towards us. And again, I don't have to tell him how to navigate past this pallet that he's walking into. I just have to point to the other side of it and he figures out a way to get past it. So the joysticks here are really the first out of the box control mechanism, but they're also probably the first to go totally by the wayside if Spot is to actually have any real utility. Pointing to spots on the ground is a sort of second level, but there's a much deeper level of autonomy that Spot can have, and that's what we're going to look at next. One of the very first questions people ask me about him is, is he like mapping the space that he's in? And the answer to that is absolutely. So the Boston Dynamics team has actually built a system for Spot to self-orientate, and that is using these fiducials. It looks like a QR code. That's because that's exactly what it is. Um, we print these out on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, and because it's printed in this exact size on a hard piece of board, Spot, when he sees it in his camera, notes what it is and can tell exactly his orientation to and distance from it because he knows what size it should be. So we're gonna put a few of these around and give Spot an autonomous mission. So I have placed these fiducials, a dozen of them, around the environment, and we're going to record the spot walking through that environment and then play it back, and that'll allow him to walk a path that we have predetermined. How this applies to the real world is if Spot had to deliver something from one part of a factory floor to another, or do something in terms of monitoring where he had to walk the same path every day, you'd put these fiducials around the space, and they would be how he would navigate that space. I haven't actually tried it on this scale before, so let's go. So I've just recorded a mission for him, going downstairs, walk in a circle, coming back upstairs. And he's going to replay that mission. But it's not like he recorded exactly how I told him to walk that way. He's gonna make his own decisions about his gait and his cadence as we go. So let's see how he does. Okay, here we go, play. Oh, right there. He's walking backwards down the stairs. It's actually the more stable way for him to walk downstairs, and I can talk about that in a second, but he just made his own call. I walked him front way, and he's like, no, it's much easier for me to go backwards, and that's how I'm gonna go. Here he comes back upstairs. Understand that when he is approaching stairs, 
he can see them topographically. And each stair presents him a nice fat picture to put his foot on. So walking upstairs is relatively straightforward for him. Now, if I turn him around and you think about what he can see from this point of view, come here. Understand now that he's looking down and the sight picture of where his foot can land here is much narrower because he doesn't have the full step. This leg right here inhibits his leg from hitting here, so he has a much narrower picture of each stair to walk down, which is why he prefers to walk down stairs backwards. So I'm gonna turn him around. And you'll see that backwards, he has again a nice fat sight picture for each stair, and thus it's a lot more stable for him to walk down stairs backwards. However, like just understanding that he can see the stairs and choose where to put his feet is freaking mind-blowing to me. It's absolute magic. Okay, now that we've run him on a mission going up and down stairs, I think I wanna try a more specific mission for him. Okay, this is a more real world scenario. I've set up a bunch of fiducials and a kind of a court here. I'm gonna have Spot walk up and down this court and you'll see why in a little bit. Record new mission. All right, Spot, you're gonna go forward. And you're gonna turn around. And you're gonna walk back the stream same way. And then you're gonna turn around. And you're gonna walk back the same way. Now I'm gonna play the mission. Now it's time to talk about why I wanted to run him on this mission. This here is a bucket of bolts and nails and stuff that you don't want in your parking lot. This here is a magnetic pickup. I'm gonna rig a little duct tape tail so that Spot can drag this behind him and clean up this parking lot. Okay, what kind of parking lot are you guys running around here? Look at all these nails everywhere. This is a horror show. Wow. Ah, if only there was somebody who could clean it all up. Proof of concept, yes, he did not like the load on his back legs because I didn't think through this rig too carefully, but you get my point, you see the point. He picked up the nails, spot. So that is the basic set of rudimentary orientation and navigation skills spot comes out of the box with. And while it may seem pretty baseline, it's also insanely robust, but it is the bottom level. There's an API, there are COM ports, there's all sorts of extra channels of proprioception and uh, self-orientation that can be added and will be added by different developers under different circumstances. Now, I know a lot of you have been asking, how long does this battery run? We've been filming solid for about an hour and he's at about 30%. The uh, working time is 90 minutes on a single battery charge and his payload, how much can he lift? just a shade over 30 pounds. All right, well, that's it. Spot and I are gonna go now. Uh, please leave your comments and questions below. We will try and answer them. We'll have some new skills for Spot next month. I think you're gonna really appreciate them. But now he's been very good for a long time. I think it's time to take him out for a poop.